Hello and welcome to Datacast Solutions Statistics and Data Mining 101 using Nine. In this chapter, we're going to look at using correlation as a means of dimensional reduction. It's pretty often that features or columns are correlated, i.e., you know, they depend on one another and therefore they carry the same information, especially the higher the correlation. Um, the more they carry the same information that would be used in a predictive model. So a data column with, with values that are highly correlated to another is not going to add much new information to a pool of input features into a predictive model. So one of the two columns is removed without decreasing. Now, in order to remove the highly correlated data columns, we first need to measure the correlation between all the pairs of columns using a linear correlation method. Then we have to apply the correlation filter node to remove the columns. If you recall back in our earlier sections on correlation in this class, the linear correlation node calculates the coefficients for all pairs of numerical columns in the data set as the Pearson product movement correlation, and for all pairs of nominal columns. Um, it also does the uh, Pearson's chi-square value. But no correlation coefficient is defined between numerical and nominal. Now when we look at the correlation matrix um, that's produced, um, it shows all the pairs of data together. Um, it's color coded so that you can review the correlation matrix with um, a plus one being full correlation, and that's gonna be in blue. Um, a zero correlation is white, and all the way up to a minus one would be a red full inverse correlation. Um, the matrix also shows, if you look, it shows the correlation of a data column to itself is the diagonal line, of course, it runs across. And um, the crosses, the X's, indicate um, missing correlation values. So, of course, what we've done, as we've done in the previous, we've got a linear correlation node that we're going to use to execute the correlation, and then a correlation filter um, is going to be used to determine uh, what is the, the the values that we're going to keep. And of course, as we've done in previous examples, we need to set the... So to find the best threshold, we're going to use the same workflow that we've been using before and the same technique we've been using before. Using the optimization loop, we're going to run the classification algorithm over and over again using different values and see which one produces the best answer. That's the one we'll apply to our... All right, so now let's look at the uh, using the high correlation method of data reduction. You can see that I'm doing almost the exact same thing. I'm partitioning my data exactly as the same, and I'm using the missing value th uh, the same as I did before. So let's jump into the high correlation threshold meta node and see what's different about this. You can see that it is mostly the same. I'm using parameter optimization start loop. And this time my new parameter is running from 0 0.1 uh, to a value of 1 and by steps of 0 0.1. And then all I'm doing, again, I'm always, as before, separating out the target variable to make sure it's not filtered away by mistake. And then I append it back onto it after the filtering is done. So the actual filtering process is simply as we described. We normalize it. We do linear, linear correlation, and then we use that correlation data against the information, the columns that are specified, and it filters away the columns that have too high of a correlation, and then it runs a denormalizer to put the data back to the way it was. Now, I'm doing the same thing. I take our data. This is what we're training on, the top one, and then the test. I need the test data to look the same, so I'm going to use a reference column filter and remove all the columns that aren't in the final version. Then I'm going to use this, and I'm just the same as before, I'm going to create um, different uh, classifiers, uh, predictive models, that are going to choose um, the highest value we can. So what I got out of this, the best parameter, is I can see that with the setting at 0.1, I got a 0.926 uh, accuracy on my predictive model, which is pretty darn good. Um, and it starts to 
slowed a little bit and starts to fall a lot after that. So I am going to go with 0.01, which was the best value that was passed out. Now we do what we have always done. We translate that best value out into a threshold of accuracy. I separate the columns again so that I don't lose my source column. I do the high correlation filter again using the same mechanism. Normalizer, linear correlation, correlation filter, and denormalizer. And then finally I put the uh, target column back onto the data set again. So you're beginning to see a pattern here. This is the process we're going to be going through whenever we're working with dimensional reduction. That completes this chapter of the class. Feel free to move on to the next chapter.